This is a brochure for the Vauxhall Nova from October 1990. The Nova replaced the Vauxhall Chevette, but it was a bit smaller than the old car, competing directly with the super minis of the day, including the Ford Fiesta and the Austin Metro. It was launched in Europe in September 1982 as the Opel Corsa, but came to Britain the following April as the Vauxhall Nova. This is the final facelift Nova, and Vauxhall did very well keeping the car looking fresh against the new Fiesta, as well as the Peugeot 106 and Renault Clio, both of which were launched in 1990, the same year as this brochure. It's intended for the 1991 model year, by which point the car had been around for nine years. As I alluded to, the facelift was pretty good. It got a new grille, new bumper, new headlamps, and in my opinion became better looking in the process. That being said, I think the Nova was the coolest looking Super Mini of the era, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Most of the old brochures I've been showing you have been from the 1970s and therefore quite bland. The real world scenes are very conservative and grey, or more correctly brown, because it was the 70s. But here we start to see proper lifestyle marketing. The Nova was very popular with younger people, especially Yobs, but there's an aspiration to this brochure and that's relayed with this opening statement. A personal partnership, you and Nova with the breadth of choice you need to match your lifestyle. Hatch or saloon for town or country, built for reliability and designed to be versatile. Nova, fashionable, fun and easy to run. Now here's an introduction to the car in general, hinting at the refresh the Nova has had for 1991. Nova. You'll recognise the name, but for 1991 there's an entirely new style for one of Britain's most popular cars. All the Nova's inherent virtues are there. Nova drivers wouldn't have it any other way. But now the skills of Vauxhall's European styling studios have brushstroked the Nova to distance it beyond the average small car. In fact, Nova has never been one of the crowd. For people who like the fun, convenience and economy of small cars, Nova now presents an even brighter, smarter image. This page continues with the lifestyle theme in its rather chic and sophisticated presentation. Before we go through the range itself, Vauxhall wants you to know about the three different body styles available on the Nova. On this page are the hatchbacks. You can have three or five doors, though there isn't a five-door car shown here. The Nova is just under 12 feet long, putting it somewhere in the middle of the early 90s Super Minis. It's 8 inches longer than the Metro and 5 inches shorter than the Fiesta. Most of the competitors are somewhere in between. Load space on the hatch is 7.9 cubic feet with the seats up and 30 cubic feet with the seats down. The text here refers to the subtly sporting flair of the hatch, a massive contrast to what's over the page. The Nova Saloon. This one was initially available in two or four-door forms, but by 1991 you could only get the four-door variant. The Saloon was aimed at a much more conservative market and one that was shrinking. And you can see this in the engine choices. You couldn't get a hot Nova Saloon. There just wasn't the market for it. The only real competitor for it was the Saloon variant of the Volkswagen Polo. And it's telling that when the Nova was replaced, the new Corsa did not get the Saloon body. Its advantage, though, was practicality. Not in terms of height, of course, but the boot is 15.2 cubic feet, nearly double that of the hatch. But in my opinion, the saloon is also quite bland. The rear end is very clumsy as well, and it's missing the key styling feature that made the Nova hatch so cool in my eyes. The box arches at the back. So now we're into the range itself, starting with the most basic Nova, the Trip. I love this spec, and if you watch my channel regularly, you'll know why. I'm a big fan of some base model brilliance. My Metro has similar silver steel wheels with little black hubcaps. It's very clean as well, with the black bumpers and no body styling. The only additional touch is the Trip decal on the doors. Inside it is rather well spec for a poverty model. You get a proper glove box, a mirror in the passenger sun visor and an AM FM radio. Vauxhall are making a point over here about headlamp levelling, but we need to remember where the Nova actually comes from, Opel in Germany. 
Their laws at the time meant that this was actually a requirement. It just so happens they left it in for UK market cars. For the avoidance of any doubt, it was designed in Germany, built in Spain. There's only one engine choice here for the little Nova trip, the one litre overhead valve engine that dated back to the 60s. Here is what I'm pretty sure was the most successful Nova, the Merit. Here's where the range really widens out as you can get a five door hatch as well as the three door and the saloon the Nova trip got. The engine choice is also much wider. 1 litre, 1.2 and 1.4 petrols alongside a 1.5 litre turbo diesel. So the body and engine choice was better as was the bodywork. This is why the Merit got so many more sales than the trip. There are full width alloy effect wheel trims, side rubbing strips and a red insert. Inside, some incremental steps up. You get a clock, a cigar lighter, a rear wiper, and on some models, fully trimmed doors, a tachometer, a catalyst, and a five-speed gearbox. The Nova Lux is where some really, really nice features arrive. First of all, the styling is a little bit more conservative than the Merit, but more luxurious as a result. There are different wheel trims and a grey rubbing strip in place of the red. To start with, you get some velour, a cassette player, a glove box and boot light, and a 60-40 split rear seat. The real niceties come with the comfort pack, which includes tinted glass, central locking and electric windows. Here we would move to the Nova Flare, but as I'm missing a few pages in this brochure that's very kindly been donated to me, we're going straight to the Nova SR. Here is where everything gets quite sporting. The SR wasn't a hot hatch though, but a cheap way to get the look. This was a mega popular spec and the styling was just right, making it such a cool little car. It was given the 1.4 litre carburetted engine, producing 72 brake horsepower and 80 pound feet of torque. The car only weighs 801 kilos, while 0 to 62 takes 12 seconds. Externally, you get the SR graphics, the red rubbing strip and some nice anthracite wheel trims. These are mega. They make it look like a rally car and of course the car just had to be advertised in red. That theme continues inside with the overdose of red. These seats have bigger bolsters and are trimmed in zipper cloth. You get rear speakers, a close ratio gearbox, stiffer suspension, low profile tyres, a sun strip and electric windows. A great spec for its era. For most people, this was the pinnacle of what the Nova could offer them. It was still affordable, but it gave all the cool features. The ultimate Nova, however, was the GSI, the proper hot hatch. A racing new image is part of the new GSI badge, hallmarking the hottest hatch in the Nova lineup. This new GSI has all the performance sizzle and drivability of its predecessor, but now with even more purposeful style. The smoother styling is partnered by an interior clearly designed with the sports driver in mind. And driving is what this GSI is all about. With 100 horsepower from its 1.6 injected engine, it leaves most of its rivals standing as it powers up through the gears with impressive ease. Then handfuls of mid-range pulling power with 135 newton meters of torque give off-the-line acceleration that pins you to your seat. Clearly, on the road, the GSI is no slouch. Around town, its abundant torque and close ratio 5-speed gearbox give you uncanny agility in traffic. Conversely, motoring at the legal limit is just a leisurely cruise. Whistling along typical country roads, though, is where the GSI comes into its own. Handling and ride are well up to expectations with fine tuning of the suspension, taking in uprated front springs and dampers, larger diameter anti-roll bars and finishing off with sporty alloys shod with low profile 17565 HR14 tyres. The result is a beautifully balanced chassis giving quick turning, minimum body roll and predictable cornering behaviour. Those power and torque outputs mean 0 to 60 in 9.5 seconds, although the GSI is much heavier than the SR, weighing in at 887 kilograms, a full 86 kilos more. It looks just immense, what with its body coloured bumpers, GSI badging, clean body lines free of rubbing strips, the sill extensions and these very period and very awesome alloy wheels. If I said they were three spoke, people would go mad. And if I said they were nine spoke, 
people would go mad. So argue among yourselves in the comments. Either way, they are brilliant. The best part of the GSI for me, however, is the grey finish on the boot lid and the Griffin decal under the screen. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have the mad colours of the SR in the interior, but you get a voltmeter and an oil pressure gauge, and as we all know, more gauges equals more better. Additionally, a sunroof, because it's one of the best features a car can have, along with all the niceties we've seen like electric windows and central locking. Finally, it is in a stunning shade of silver. So now we've covered the range, Vauxhall goes on to tell us about the engineering that's packed into the Nova. First of all, it's computing. Despite the fact that an awful lot of cars, if not most, had computer input by 1990, it was still seen as impressive to the customer, so we have a vague paragraph about it over here. We have the same rubbish we always see about engines being the most modern and impressive available. More interestingly though, they talk about catalytic converters and unleaded petrol. Two things that were still relatively new in the UK in 1990, even more so with catalysts in cars of this size. Along those same lines, the turbo diesel and its 132 newton metres of torque. Despite safety not being a massively pressing issue in 1990, the Nova's crumple zones are mentioned, along with the little features like the seatbelt buckles being bolted to the seats themselves, so they follow you as you move the seat forwards and backwards. The Nova, as with a lot of small cars in period, had its fair share of competition exploits, involving a certain Scottish fella called Colin McRae. Wonder if anyone's ever heard of him. Anyway. Now, here is all your equipment, and as ever, if you do want to look at any of this, just pause the video. Here are the tech specs, so engines, transmissions, dimensions, loads of lovely in-depth specifications here. Finally, your weights, audio, and trim options. In a splash of colour and a return to the lifestyle theme, some of the accessories you can get for the Nova. I'm sure there was a full accessory brochure available, but we see just normal things like roof racks, mud flaps, um, first aid kits, child seats, all that usual rubbish. The final page of the brochure is all about customer care, and if I'm honest, it's pretty boring. Though we are seeing the new rounded Vauxhall badge that would become standard through the 90s. Meanwhile, the car itself was still carrying the squared off badges. So, there we are. A look at a Vauxhall Nova brochure from October 1990. One of the coolest looking super minis of its era, and a really in-depth brochure, showing a very different kind of style of marketing to what you've all become used to through these videos. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to Twincam as well. It really, really makes a difference, and I'll have more videos coming along soon.